All right, let's dive in. Today we're looking at uh, some really tense global situations. Yeah, yeah. Specifically those brewing around Israel and Iran. And, right. And we've also got some major developments with North Korea and Russia in the mix. It's like the whole world is kind of on edge right now, isn't it? What's yeah. interesting to me is how these things yeah. might seem totally separate at first glance, but they're all woven together. Yeah. Like threads in this this massive global tapestry. Oh, that's a great way to put it. One little tug and the whole thing could unravel, you know? Absolutely. And speaking of things unraveling, let's start with what's happening with Israel and Iran. Right. Our intel suggests that Israel's cabinet has already given the green light for a second strike against Iran. Mm. And apparently this next one oh, wow. is going to be completely different from what we saw last weekend. Yeah, that's definitely causing some serious anxiety within Iran. You know, that's... Israel's not backing down and this next strike could really escalate things. And it seems like the U.S. is standing firm with Israel on this one. Yeah. We've got sources pointing to that warning they issued at the U.N. Right. Talking about serious consequences if Iran keeps pushing. It's a pretty clear message, isn't it? Definitely feels like they're drawing a line in the sand. Definitely. The U.S. and Israel are working closely together here, trying to limit Iran's power in the region. It's a high-stakes game they're playing, that's for sure. Yeah, it really is. Now, our sources also suggest that these recent strikes have exposed a pretty big gap between yeah. Iranian and Israeli military capabilities. Right, and that's a game-changer. Yeah, huge. Yeah. When you're thinking about how all the players are going to react, Right. this difference in strength could really embolden Israel and make Iran's allies think twice. Makes you wonder what's going to happen next. Yeah. Okay, here's where things get really interesting. Okay. One of our sources is predicting that Iran is, and I quote, basically decided, <laughs> meaning that they're headed for some kind of collapse. Mm. That's a bold statement, don't you think? Mm. What are they basing that on? It is bold, but you have to remember, predictions aren't guarantees. Right. But there are a few factors converging right now. Yeah. You've got internal instability within Iran. The sanctions are really hitting them hard. Right. And then you've got the constant pressure from Israel's military actions. Right. It's like a perfect storm. Exactly. It could all lead to a huge shift in the Iranian regime, maybe even a total collapse of the state. All right. Well, let's shift gears for a moment. OK. Let's talk about that other powder keg you mentioned. Yeah. North Korea. Yeah. Reports are saying that they've got troops on the ground in Russia now. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg is calling this a major escalation. That's got to raise some eyebrows. Absolutely. When you hear the head of NATO using language like that, you know things are getting serious. It tells you a lot about how the intelligence community sees this whole thing, and it makes you think they're really worried this could get out of control. So what does a major escalation actually mean for North Korea? What are the real world consequences they might face for getting involved? Well, for North Korea, it's a huge risk. Yeah. They're jumping into an already volatile conflict on Russia's side. Right. This could lead to even more sanctions, make them more isolated on the world stage, maybe even trigger military retaliation. Wow. It all depends on what happens next. You know, what's really interesting is this idea that what's happening with Israel and Iran and the situation with North Korea in Ukraine, they might actually be connected somehow. It's like a giant global chess match. Right. Each move has ripple effects across the whole board. Exactly. And that's where things start to get really fascinating. Some of our sources are drawing parallels between what Israel's doing with Iran and what the West might be planning to do with North Korea. They're thinking they're letting these events play out on purpose. Like yeah. it's all part of some bigger strategic plan. It definitely makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it really does make you think, doesn't it? It's like we're not just reacting to things as they happen, but maybe we're actively shaping them. Mm. And a big part of that is intelligence, right? Gathering it and knowing when to use it. Right. The stuff we see happening publicly might be the result of decisions that were made weeks, months ago behind closed doors. It's like we're getting a glimpse behind the curtain of this huge global production. Exactly. And here's where it gets even more interesting. Our sources are saying that the Israeli strikes on Iran might be serving two purposes. Okay, how so? Well, they're not just about punishing Iran for what they're doing. Right. They're also about seeing how well Western military tech holds up against the kind of systems Iran might be using, systems they could have gotten from Russia or China. So they're using this conflict as a testing ground for future fights. That seems pretty risky. It definitely raises the stakes. Yeah. Think about it. What they learn from these strikes could be used in a future conflict with North Korea. 
especially if they're using similar weapons from Russia or China. Exactly. It's like we're entering a whole new era of warfare. Yeah, where tech and intel are even more important than ever before. Exactly. The battlefield's changing and the lines between traditional and non-traditional warfare are getting blurry. Right. We're seeing more asymmetric warfare where smaller players can use technology to challenge the big guys. Okay, so let's try to put all this together. Based on what we know, what are some of the scenarios that could play out? Well, I think the big thing to remember is that what happens with Iran is probably going to have a big impact on what happens with North Korea. Hmm. They're connected. Exactly. They're linked. Yeah. So let's walk through some possibilities. What happens if Iran decides to hit back at Israel? That seems like it could really set things off. Yeah. Retaliation from Iran could pull the U.S. and other Western powers into a much bigger conflict. Right. And it could also make North Korea bolder, maybe even push them to do something more aggressive in Ukraine or somewhere else. And what if Iran doesn't retaliate? Would that make them look weak? It's possible. It might seem like they're admitting they're not as strong militarily or politically. Yeah. And that could make Israel even more assertive towards Iran, which would just escalate things further. And how do you think China and Russia are going to react to all of this? I can't just sit back and watch. Oh, you're absolutely right. They've got their own interests in the region, and they're definitely paying close attention. Yeah. If they feel like their influence or their allies are threatened, they might have to step in, which would make this whole situation even more complicated. So basically, we're looking at a chain reaction where one wrong move could set off a global crisis. Yeah, it's a delicate balance. The stakes are incredibly high, not just for the countries involved, but for the whole world. Right. What happens here could reshape the geopolitical landscape for generations. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. It really feels like we're on the edge of something big, hmm. watching it all unfold with this mix of fascination and worry, you know. It's definitely a pivotal moment in history. So many things are converging right now. P political ambitions, military maneuvering, all these technological advances. It's uh -huh. all playing out on this global stage, and the consequences could be huge. You know, one thing that really struck me was that idea about Israel using these strikes on Iran to test out Western military tech against those systems Iran might be using. Mm. What do you think that says about the future of warfare? Are we going to see more of these proxy conflicts where superpowers test their weapons in smaller battles. It's kind of a scary thought, right? Using proxy wars as testing grounds. It makes you think that international relations are becoming more calculated, more ruthless. Yeah. The lines between conventional and unconventional warfare are blurring, and these advanced technologies are playing a bigger and bigger role in how these decisions are made. It's pretty unsettling to think about future wars being fought with algorithms and AI instead of just soldiers and tanks. Exactly. And there are so many implications to think about. We're talking about autonomous weapons, cyber warfare, AI being used even more for intelligence and strategy. And then there are the ethical questions like who's accountable, who's in control, what about the unintended consequences? It feels like we're in uncharted territory, like the old rules don't apply anymore. So how do we navigate this world that's getting more complex and uncertain by the day? How do we manage these escalating tensions and keep them from boiling over? That's the big question, isn't it? I think the key is to be flexible and open to new ways of doing things. Hmm. We need to go beyond those traditional ideas of diplomacy and deterrence, come up with more creative and nuanced strategies. That means encouraging dialogue, building connections between nations, and finding common ground even when there's disagreement. It's about understanding where everyone's coming from, even those we might see as enemies. Exactly. We have to remember that every country has its own interests and things they're worried about. It's about finding ways to address those concerns without resorting to military action or escalating things further. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the one big takeaway you want our listeners to leave with? I want them to understand that we're at a turning point in history. The decisions we make right now as individuals and as a global community will have a huge impact on the future. We need to approach these challenges with a sense of urgency and a commitment to talking to each other and finding common ground. The stakes are just too high to ignore. It's been eye-opening and a little bit scary, this deep dive. It's a reminder that we can't just sit back and watch things happen. We all have a part to play in building a more peaceful and just world. Thanks for joining us on this exploration. And remember... Knowledge is power, and thinking critically is the best weapon we have when things are uncertain.